Well, hello. Is that Miss Yolanda? Hey, Miss Yolanda, how are you doing? Hey, just be real. How are you? Hey, Danielle, how are you guys doing? Welcome. Thank you for being here. Just be real. I have to use a different app because HAPS is no more. And so I am streaming from um, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So let me know. Well, hi there, Nikki's Vibe. Okay, we might be all right. We might be all You see me? Okay, great. And then check on the um, the Twitter and the Facebook. Hey, Miss Yolanda, I know who you are. I see your pretty face. How are you? I got my glasses on too, so I can actually see distance. <laughs> How are you doing? Hello, Daniel. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Nikki's Vibe. So at least I'm seeing the comments over here. And I know these are coming from Facebook. Let me make sure they're coming from, uh, not Facebook, but YouTube. Let me make sure they're coming in from, um, hey there, Pastor R. George. How are you? How are you? So let me make sure everything is working over here. Hello, Keto, uh, Kresha. How are you? Oh, thank you. And you always look beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ms. Nikki. I appreciate you. Let me see. Something has happened. Let me look and see. Let me see. Give me a minute. Just be real. Let me know if you see me on Facebook. Thank you, Sally. I appreciate that. I am blessed as well. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much. Let me make sure all of them are broadcasting because I had to use a different um, I had to use a different platform because HAPS is no more. So I'm using a different platform. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. I truly appreciate you. Thank you so much. Well, hello there, Miss Brenda. Hola to you too. I'm doing great. Thank you so much. Um, let me see if um let me see. Let me make sure I'm broadcasting from um. Let's see, we're currently do not support sending this to Facebook groups, Facebook profiles, and LinkedIn accounts. Okay, so it's not over on Facebook. Let's see. All right, so it is not sending over to Facebook. So let me let me do Facebook real quick, okay? Hold on a minute. Let me do Facebook. Well, it is on Facebook. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me make sure. Y'all give me just a minute, okay? Because it's on my Facebook. I just don't know why it's not on this Facebook. Give me a minute. Hold on, everybody. Let me just check my page, okay? Hey, Jay White. Hi, William J. Perkins. How are you? One Orlando Pitts. How are you? You don't see me on Facebook? Okay, I'm on my private Facebook, so hold on. All right, let me see. Let me post it here. Give me a second. Give me just a second. Hold on, let me see. Y'all give me just a second, okay? How are you guys doing? I love rhythm. Okay, girl, I see you. Now, give me just a minute. Let me make sure this is showing up on my other page, okay? Okay, so maybe it's not. Okay, give me just a moment. Let's see what's going on here. It should be broadcasting from there, but I don't know why it's not. Y'all give me just a second. Let me go see what's going on. Let's see what's happening. Give me a second. All right, let me make sure. Hold on a minute.
Give me just a second, you guys. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'm using a brand new app, so hold on a minute. We should be okay. All right. Just be real. Go check and see. I should be on there. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, Miss Valerie, how are you? Hey there, Helene. How are you doing? Oh, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Subscribe. Let me see. Turn on. No, good kitty. Thank you so much. Just be real. Do you see me on... um? You don't see me on my Facebook, do you? Because I don't see me on my Facebook. So let me look. All right, y'all give me a second. I'm just going to go to YouTube and I'm just going to post my YouTube video on my Facebook so we can get started. I apologize for the delay. I haven't seen you guys in so long. I'm just ready to talk to you. Hey, difficult um, conversation. I was about to say situation. Conversation. Hey, um, Zen Su. I don't want to mess your name up. How are you guys? Nope. Okay. Okay. Give me a minute. I'm just going to go ahead and just share it to my Facebook page. You guys, give me a second. Let me share it to my Facebook page. Let me share it to my Facebook page. Let me copy the link and share it. Hold on. And it should show up. Give me a second. So we can get to talking. This is a new app, but I'm thinking about going back to Restream because it's making things complicated. And I hate to make it complicated for you guys. But here we go. All right. Let's try this again. Okay. Now go look. Just be real. I should be on there. Okay. And just a second is downloading. So I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, I should be on there now. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Okay, now go look. Those of you that like following him on Facebook, I have just posted the link on Facebook. It should be on there now, just be real. I'm looking at myself, so I, we should be good. We should be okay now. Thank you guys so much for being patient with me. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Yolanda. I appreciate you. Hey, Steve, how are you? Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, so those people that are on Facebook should be able to see me on Facebook now. I just saw myself when I posted it. So it's the YouTube video on there. So hopefully, you guys, you see me. So as soon as she gives me a thumbs up, I'll turn on Clubhouse. So those of you that are wanting to go on Clubhouse and talk to me after I do the the broadcast so we can answer and question and talk and all that good stuff. Hey, Southern girl, how are you? And thank you guys for being patient with me. I missed you guys. I missed you guys. Thank you so much for being patient with me while I have been gone. Uh, I've been in classes. I have been busy. And so my uh, sincerest apologies. And then, of course, you know, Haps went away. So I couldn't really. Hey, Miss Jesus, uh, girl, Betty, how are you? So I couldn't, I couldn't get on like I wanted to. So please forgive me. But here I am. I'm back, y'all. I'm back. Then I had to get new lenses for my camera. You see me on Facebook? You see your YouTube on Facebook? Okay, great. I missed you guys. I did. Thank you so much, Miss Yolanda. So she said you guys can see me on Facebook. So I am ready. Let me make sure I knock anything over because I got long legs and everything is. Uh, I would turn the camera around so you guys can see because everything is up on my legs. So you guys, give me a minute. I'm going to turn on Clubhouse. For those of you that would like to join me on Clubhouse, I am on Clubhouse. Let me add some stuff on Clubhouse. I am so grateful. Thank you guys for being so patient with me. Thank you for being patient with me. Hey, just be real. Hey, Queen. Thank you guys for being so sweet and so uh, patient with me. I'm Gary. Um, let me uh, pin a link real quick, and then we're going to get to talking. I missed you guys. Okay, so let's pin this dot, and then we're going to start talking. All righty. So let's see. Okay, well, I just did not pin that correctly, did I? Let me remove my link. Let me try that again. All right, that link didn't work. Let me see. 
you know what? We're not going to worry about it right now. You see me on YouTube? I am here. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for being patient with me. Hello, everybody. Queen, Lakeish, Melissa, Carrie. Hey, Ms. Barbette. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for being patient with me. I have been gone for a few weeks. I don't want you guys to think I abandoned you because absolutely not. I have not abandoned any of you guys. I love you guys. I think about you guys all the time. I just have been busy. So for the last two or three, two or three weeks, I've been going to classes every morning. I got an appointment tomorrow at 10 um, and I have been busy in classes. And, and so I have not been able to come on here. Then on Sundays, um, you know, I take care of my my mother as well. I work with a team and I have to, hey, JJ, hey, Janelle, how are you? Um, so I, sometimes I'm busy. So by the time I get back, some because it's a long drive back home, everything, Ivory, how are you? And so sometimes I'm coming in here late and so I can't really, and then I had the camera doing something else with the camera. So I didn't have a chance to set up my equipment, but I know you guys don't want to hear all that. You guys want to hear what we're going to talk about this evening. And so thank you guys so much for joining me. Those of you that do not know who I am, those of you that are new followers, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for coming on and supporting me. Hey, JD Live. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you. I am Dr. Carmen Bryant. I am the host of Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. So this is to my new viewers. Some of you guys already know who I am. Um, those of you that also have Clubhouse, you're welcome to join me on Clubhouse. What I usually do is I teach a little bit. And then after some question and answers, I usually switch over to Clubhouse so that you can personally ask me some questions um, and we can have a, a talk where I actually get to talk to you. I get to hear your voice. Um, and so uh, I am a licensed mental health counselor. Um, a therapist here in the state of Washington. I'm also a certified clinical trauma professional. Um, now, for some people, um, they do work, you know, of course, we work with mental health disorders, um, but my choice of work is working with those that have been through narcissist abuse. My niche is working with women. Uh, most of my followers is a higher percentage of women than there are men. However, that does not disclude men because men go through um, narcissist abuse just like women go through narcissist abuse. And women can be even more vicious than men are. Uh, first of all, because we're nurturers and I'm not saying I'm one, but we're nurturers. And so and 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 then on top of that, the, the use of seduction, the use of sexuality, the use of your children. So women can be. Uh, and then those of you that are in the LBGTQ plus uh, community, um, women can be even more vicious than men um, can be because uh, women use emotion, sexuality, that kind of stuff. Now, my niche is women. And so I do come in, but I do talk about everything in general, which can be applied to any of you, any of you guys that have gone through this type of um, uh, pain and trauma. And so today I wanted to talk to um, the parents that have narcissistic children or children with narcissistic personality disorder, or you're assuming because you're watching the behavior. First of all, allow me to say this. You know, the first thing is a lot of parents beat themselves up because uh, and they have a guilty conscience or they feel guilty all the time because of the fact that your child fits the category of what content creators are talking about when they're talking about narcissistic personality disorder. You see it, you watch them do it. Please know that every single, um, every single um, narcissist has a parent, has a parent, has had parents, foster parents, you know, adoptive parents, uh, biological parents, they've got parents. And the thing about it is, is when you read the comments, uh, a lot of comments under a lot of content creators, you could tell like women or men that don't have children, you know, because they're very cruel in the comments that they make, you know, put them all on the island. You need to castrate them. You need to do this, you know, which is for for most part is inappropriate because of the fact that you got parents of the narcissist that may be, you know, abuse. And then of course you got to understand some narcissists come from narcissistic homes. So the parents are narcissists, you know, but each one of these narcissists, they have parents and parents that love them, parents that can't change anything about their child. And they're listening to the, the content that's being put out, um, you know, and they're listening and their children fall in that category. And one thing that a mother or father has is the love of their child. You know, it doesn't matter whether the child is a serial killer. It doesn't matter whether the child is a murderer. It doesn't matter whether the child is a, is a, is a rapist, whether the child is, you know, a narcissist, they still have a parent you know, I'm not saying, you know, healthy, whatever we consider healthy or normal, whatever we consider normal, they got a parent and some of those parents love their children, you know, and they know, you know, you ask them, they know. And then you have to remember that 
narcissistic personality disorder develops some type of way. Somehow or another, that child has developed, well, into an adult, but has developed NPD. Now, some of them come from homes that were abusive. Some of them come from homes where the parent was a narcissist. Some come from a hole where the parent, and, and some of you guys came to my classes when I did these classes um, concerning um, the parenting, different parenting style, different attachment styles, and how um, some of these children ended up with a different parenting style, different attachment styles, uh, and what type of uh, personality or, you know, that child may have developed to include um, that narcissist. And what happens is, is depending on the parenting style as well, sometimes well-meaning parents who love their children either over-parent or under-parent. A lot of parents are trying to save their children. And by trying to save their children, a lot of times they go in a guilt parent. And so when you go in and guilt parent, you're not correcting your child or you're not disciplining your child like they should be disciplined. So they grow up and they become entitled. Now, parents, you can't go back and change something that you didn't know anything about. Most parents didn't know anything about narcissistic personality disorder. You didn't know anything about cluster B. You didn't know anything about, I mean, you can't beat yourself up for information that you did not have. You know, you can't feel guilty about something that you did not know. You did the best that you thought that you were doing with your child. You do have parents that underparent. Some of them guilt parent. Some of them may have had a, of the narcissistic parent may have died. And so the father or the mother overcompensates. They overcompensate for their little angel. They say they correct correct them, but they won't let anybody else correct them either. You know, you have some that, that never, uh, th their children are entitled or, or they treat them like little princes. They, they, they treat them above and beyond where they don't learn realistically about, uh, um, positive and negative consequences or life consequences. You know, for those of you that do have children that have narcissistic parents, you have to remember that uh, one thing you don't want to do is compete with the narcissistic parent because the narcissistic parent is always going to try to be the fun parent. They're always going to try to do something um, above and beyond what you're doing. And if you start parenting your child in competition with that narcissistic parent, you're going to miss the whole was a conglomerate, you're going to miss the whole point of parenting your child. You have to be the parent that's stable in the home, meaning it doesn't matter what your child says. I hate you. I don't want to be around you. I want to go live with my mom or my dad. It doesn't matter. You keep boundaries. You keep standards. You make sure they have chores. You make sure that they're disciplined. You make sure that you use that word no. And don't be afraid when they make the comment, I just much rather stay with mom. I much rather stay with dad. You do what you have to do to maintain boundaries. To ma And some of you guys know that now that they're older, you know, now that the kids are older, the same thing that they do to the adults. Now think about it. A lot of things that we talk about, we talk about the adults and how like relationship wise, you know, how within a relationship, these narcissists treat you. So we talk a lot about the triangulation, the love bombing, you know, the narcissistic, the narcissistic relationship cycle. You talk about the gaslighting. Some of you guys are being abused by your own kids. They gaslight you. And the one thing you have to remember, and the one thing that they know is the person that will hurt you the most is the person that's closest to your heart. Who's closest to your heart but your parent? And I'm not saying the dysfunctional parent. I'm not talking about the narcissistic parent. I'm talking about those of us that are normal. You know, who who is that child going to attack? The person that is closest to them, the person that loves them the most. Isn't that what they do in relationships? The person that loves them the most is the person that they attack the most. You have become the primary supply. You know, you are the primary supply when it comes to the child in the very beginning, you know, because you won't detach from the child. And they know that as an adult and they will still harass you. They manipulate you. They make you feel bad. Uh, hopefully you guys can still hear me over here. Give me just a second. Let me make sure my connection is OK on this phone having some problems with connection. So hopefully you guys can hear me on Clubhouse. Um, but some of you, you know, your children gaslight you. Some of you, your children uh, punish you. Some of them, you know, they they dog you out. You send a text and tell them you love them. You send a text and 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 tell them, I just want, hey baby, I just want to tell you mama or daddy loves you. I was thinking about you. And they may send you a text. Uh, mama, daddy, I love you. I just wanted to know you. Now, now check this out. And some of you guys know your kids well enough to know that as soon as they start, you're the best mom in the whole world. You're the best dad in the world. And I just want you to know you already know in the back of your mind you want something. 
there, there, there are some that want something. And once you say no, and this, it just keep going and keep going. So every time they want that very same thing and they'll do whatever they can to try to force you to change your mind. And every time you say no, then they manipulate, they, they, they torment you. They talk about you. They talk about what type of parents you are. And another thing, parents, you got to remember some of you clubhouse is good. Okay. Some of you feel guilty about the fact that your children are that, that suffer with this disorder. And so what happens is, is you've already apologized to your children for the things that you didn't know. Please forgive mama. Please forgive daddy, because I made some mistakes when I was parenting. I didn't know, you know, some of them have been abused and you found out and you apologize. You gave them a heartfelt apology. But one thing that you notice over and over again is that every time they want something or anytime they want to manipulate or cause drama, they keep bringing up the same thing over and over and over again. You have to get to a point where, first of all, if you have apologized to your child about things that you didn't know anything about, maybe you were too young, you didn't know, you didn't even know you were in a narcissistic relationship. You were being abused in front of your children and your children witnessed it and they had vicarious trauma, secondary trauma, and they got PTSD from secondary trauma. Some of them developed narcissistic personality disorder or borderline personality disorder because they were watching you being abused. So you come back and you apologize to your children. Please forgive me because I didn't know any better. But your child constantly throws it in your face. Once you've apologized, apologize to someone that's whether it's your child or anybody else once you've apologized you've done your part the apology now rests in their lap if they choose sometimes what they'll do is not sometimes most of the times what they'll do is, is tell you i'm not ready to forgive you really what they're trying to do is is they're trying to hold you in a cage because they want you to keep on apologizing and keep on apologizing and keep on apologizing you have to get to a point where you finally make a decision listen I've apologized. If you choose not to accept my apology, I'm not going to keep on begging you to accept my apology. It is what it is. And then some of you know that your children torment you. Your children torment you. Anytime they, it doesn't matter who they get around. It doesn't matter who they talk to. It, it could be family. It could be friends. Some of you guys know for a fact that you can't even let them know when you are in the general vicinity where they are, because you know that if they show up, they're going to purposely try to embarrass you, humiliate you, dog you out, say something. So see the same thing that they do to their partners is the same thing they do to you and even worse. And then they tell all your personal business, all your, but anything, Anything that they can think of to humiliate you, they're going to tell your business. And so some of you guys have to make up in your mind, even though you love your child, you love your child, you have to make a choice. Am I going to continue to be tormented by my child? Am I going to same way that you have to make a decision for some, you have to make a decision to cut them off. You know, some of you have to make a decision to, to not just gray rock. Some of you guys have to go no contact with your own children. And that's one of the hardest thing a parent has to do. Y'all, excuse me. Let me take off this belt. I feel like a sausage. I feel like I'm about to pass out. But, uh, oh, good gracious. This belt is wet. I'm sweating. But um, some of you guys, some of you guys have to make a decision to cut your own child off. Some of you guys have made a, have to make a decision to no go to go no contact with your own children because your children are tormenting you. Some of you guys know better than to let them move in the house back in the house with you because you know when they move back in the house with you, they don't act like a child. They act like they're your peer. Not only do they act like your peer, they act like you're, they're your man or your woman. They act like you, they were married to you. They they treat you like that. Now I've I've met people. Um, who have children that are narcissists um, and their children handle them like they are their equals. Not only their equals have told them, I'm a grown man, I'm a grown woman. And so now that I'm a grown man and a grown woman, I'm going to tell you about yourself. Let me tell you about yourself. The only reason why you don't want to talk to me is because of the fact that you know I'm telling the truth about you. And really what they're doing is, is they're gaslighting you. They're manipulating you. You know, they, they, they want something from you. You know what I mean? And so, listen, when when you have adult kids that are narcissists, don't you ever let anybody make you feel bad about the fact that you love your children? Because people on Facebook, people on social media, 
they'll make, you know, I've, I've even read where someone said, um, I despise every parent that ever gave birth to a narcissist. You know, I feel sorry for that person because you have no idea whether or not that person is going to give birth to a person or a child that's going to develop NPD. And then those same words that they hurled out there to insult other parents is the same words they're going to have to eat up if their child ever develops NPD. And so what I've had, I've read comments, I had to block them, but I, because I know that it hurts your heart to hear something like that, because there's nothing you can do to change that. And then they try to make you feel guilty because of the fact that you love your children. Well, a mother and a father is always going to be a mother and a father. A mother is always going to be a, a mother. She gave birth. That was her baby. And now you're watching your child act a fool. You know, don't you let anybody make you feel guilty about the fact that you love your child, even if they are a narcissist. You know, because the one thing, you know, a mother or a father always looks and they're always going to have hope for their child. They're always hoping, you know, always hoping that that child will recover, always hoping that maybe something will change. You know, but you got to be careful because no matter how much love you give them, you know, they're not going to change off of that. And you're going to keep getting abused. You know, there's some parents that say, I'll never give up. And that's OK. You know, some of you guys are, are praying men and women. Some of you continue and continue to do that. Don't stop doing that. But some of you guys have been so tormented by your own children that you have to make a decision. It's one of the hardest decisions that you ever have to make, because one thing they're going to make you feel is they're going to make you feel guilty for making that decision. They're going to try to make you feel guilty because of the fact that you need your sanity. You need your peace and quiet. But you yourself is getting is getting sick, are getting sick because of the fact that you're dealing with your own child. You, you don't even have a man. You don't even have a woman. You're dealing with your own child. And the way that they handle you is like you're their man. You're their woman. You know, but you have to make a decision because ain't no way that you're just going to stay up all night, all night and let somebody torment you as if you married to this person. You don't deserve to be tormented. You don't deserve to be um, uh, treated any kind of way. So you guys have to make that decision. You know, you guys have to make a decision. You, you know, you love your children. And sometimes just like you have to do your parents, you have to love them from a distance. You have to love them from a distance because no matter what you do, they're, they're going to torment you. They're going to make you feel bad. They're going to embarrass you. No different than the relationship. The very things we talk about on YouTube, the very thing you see content creators talking about, the, the, the hard part about it is, is a parent knows in the back of their mind, even if they don't want to admit it, even though they shake their head, they, they're not, you know, they haven't, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they're denying the truth because they just can't believe it's my child. You're talking about my child. Why me? Why me? You know, and another parent is saying the same thing. Why me? Why me? You know, don't you let anybody make you feel bad about the fact that you love your child because you still love your child. You know, we're going to create content and it applies to your child. I've had people ask me, but what about if it's my son? Those facts still still apply to your son, still applies to your daughter. So you guys come on, ask me some questions. Talk to me. Ask me some questions. Then I'm going to go over here to Clubhouse. I didn't want to stay on long, you know, because I know you guys have other things to do besides hearing me just talk. But talk to me. Ask me some questions so I can answer some questions. Ask me some questions. And those of you that are on Facebook watching live from YouTube, thank you so much, so much. If you click on the YouTube, um, on the Facebook, if you click on YouTube, you can ask me whatever question you'd like to ask me. So ask me some questions. Talk to me. Thank you, Zaranjia. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Good evening to you, too. Good evening to you, too. I may not use this app next time. I might go back to Restream because I think Restream worked a little better for me. But I'm just trying this new app to see how it works. It's all right. Uh, so I might go back to Restream. But you guys, uh, ask me some questions. Can early therapy help nip it in the bud? You know what, Magically Me? And I'm just saying this um, because I would have to look at research to see what research has to say. But, the, but what I say is, is uh, and based off of what I have seen, uh, when parents have interjected early, um, you know, especially if they have uh, parents that are narcissists as well, where they interjected early and, um, and work with that child young. And I'm talking about the parents. You know, you can go to therapy, get some tools and work with that child at a young age. Um, I've done a lot of classes. Um, I've, well, I've done some classes. Some of you guys have been to my classes where I talked about that. 
um, where I talked about early intervention for um, children, uh, some of the things, how to teach them empathy, um, how to teach them uh, uh, empathy and uh, compassion, you know, how to correct them, uh, you know, like what to say, what not to say, how not to compete. I've done some classes on that as well. I do believe, you know, unless I'm proven wrong, that if you interject early, you might prevent the, um, the disorder from developing, you know, because most people do have narcissistic traits, but from developing into an actual disorder, it might just be some traits, but in, instead of developing into the actual disorder by early intervention, you know, and that requires a lot of work from the parent that requires a lot of work from the parent. Um, uh, Supreme goddess said, um, it's one thing to love your narcissistic child, but what do you have to say about parents that enable and are accomplices to their child's evil deeds? I'm talking about adult narcs. That's exactly what I was talking about. There are some um, some narcissistic children that have narcissistic parents, and you wonder how they develop the, um, the um, disorder. Well, they got a narcissistic parent that is training them. You know, so what can we say? There's nothing. What can we do? You know, what can we do? What is the age of here of Bernice? I need you to retype that because I'm not sure what you're asking me. You are so welcome, magically me. Oh, these comments are going a little quicker than most of my other apps. Let's see. All righty. You guys have some more questions? Let me see how to scroll on this. Yeah, I might have to. Um, hey, just be real. I might have to go back to restream because because I'm not too sure about this app because I don't. I only have YouTube on here, and I really like when YouTube and Facebook is together. So after I cut this off, I might go back and come out of this and then go back to restream. So I apologize. I don't have everybody on here because normally everybody's on here at one time. Hi from um, New Zealand. Welcome. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Um, she said, that's so true. His mother is a narc. So that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if you got a narcissist training a narcissist, I mean, what can you do to interject? You know what I mean? When that narcissist is actually putting their narcissism on the narcissist, you know, so you got this whole cycle of narcissists going on in the house. You know, what, what can you possibly do? Um, how old can the child be to help with NPD? At what age can you not help? Narcissistic personality de uh, de um, development normally begins in childhood and develops through childhood, right? However, a lot of the traits that you see in young children is a normal developmental process is a normal developmental process. By the time they're about 18 or 19 years old is usually when narcissistic personality disorder is diagnosed. However, for those of you that do have knowledge now, you now can pick up certain things that is not normal for a child. For example, if you notice a child and you, a lot of teenagers, I talked to my, my teenager and a lot of things that I'm hearing about in school is stuff that is not normal where they purposely bully or torment another child, or they enjoy, they have pleasure out of seeing someone hurt, or they they're, they're getting pleasure out of bullying someone or seeing someone hurt. Those are things to start paying attention to. You know, they get pleasure out of seeing you get in trouble, or they see, they get pleasure out of seeing if you're in a bad relationship and they get pleasure out of being a, a tattletale by knowing that this person is abusing you. So they'll purposely tell things to your spouse, your you know, your significant other just to see how they react and they get pleasure out of watching this. So there are little things. Don't think for a minute that you can't now that we know there's not little things that you can pick up on. That is not normal. That is abnormal for a child. That's not right. Something is that's not right. You see what I mean? They're tormenting animals. They get pleasure out of torment. You know, that's psychopath, sociopathic, anti-personality type of stuff, you know, but you notice little things that are just not 
just that don't that that doesn't look like a normal developmental process in a child and don't cover it up don't make excuses and justify the behavior because if you make excuses and justify the behavior because you just don't want it to be you're not going to help the child at all um what do you tell a friend who has who has to keep her narcissistic 36 year old from tormenting his 20 year old brother when he comes home, neither lives with her now. Those are grown men. Those are, those are, those are grown folks, you know? So what do you tell a friend who has to keep her 36 year old from tormenting the 20 year old brother when he comes home and neither one of them live with her now? I mean, what can she say? You know, the 20 year old, she's going to have to tell, teach that 20 year old how to defend himself. Yeah. You have to teach that 20 year old how to defend himself, you know? I mean, what can you say? Because these are two grown folks and that 20 year old uh, has to learn how to defend himself or get away from his own brother, you know, and get away from his own brother. There's nothing wrong with telling him that. Get away from his own brother. Show her some of the videos, you know, show her some of the videos. And then, hey, you know, you got to teach him how to defend himself, even if he has to stop talking to his brother. But what's the biggest thing that parents always do? Well, that that is blood is thicker than water. That is your brother. And, you know, you guys are going to have to work it out. Not if your brother is tormenting you. If your brother is tormenting, your brother, sister is tormenting you. Why, parents, would you tell them you guys are brothers and sisters? You guys have to learn to get along. But you notice this is a pattern. Then why? Because basically what you're doing is, is teaching the other one how to be helpless. You're teaching them not to defend themselves. So that means it's happening with their siblings. So it's going to happen when they go out into the world. Hello, Trina. How are you? What if you notice that type of behavior, but the parent guardian won't listen to you? Ain't nothing that you can do. It's not your, it is not your responsibility. Once you've given them information, you can't make them do anything. You can, it doesn't matter. Even a ther I'm a therapist and I can give the information in therapy, but it's, it's up to the person that I'm giving the information to, to apply it. If they don't apply it or if they don't use it, nothing I can do. Same thing. You give them the information. If they don't follow the guidance or if they don't apply the information or if they there's nothing that you can do. You can't force nobody to do anything. You can't force anybody to do nothing. You give them information and then that's your you've done your job. Put the that's just like with the with this content creation that we do. You know, when when I put the information out. It's up to you to apply it to your life. You can't say that the information don't work if you don't apply it, you know, and you're talking to survivors, you know, you're talking to survivors to include me. Hey, Kelly Mack, how are you? Hey, uh, Project Queen, how are you? Coach Terica, how are you doing? Let me see. Let me see if I missed any questions over here. I feel like you're talking about the dangers of splitting like the narcissist people tend to do. Uh, what do you mean by, by splitting? What do you mean by splitting? Because um, dissociative personality disorder is totally different than narcissistic personality disorder. And studies show that um, if you're talking about dissociative disorder, which used to be multiple personality disorder, it's very rare that a person that has dissociative disorder also has narcissistic personality disorder. How are you? Hey, um, Di Dividal. Di Hold on. Dividal? Dividal? Hopefully I didn't mess your name up. I'm sorry. Let's see. Have any more questions, y'all? Oh yeah, well that that's that is how they are. Black and white thinking, idealized and yeah, that's that's how they think anyway. That that's that is the whole cycle of a narcissist in any relationship. In order to break the cycle, you have to get out the relationship or the situationship. What do you do when the therapist smirks when you say you believe you, you were abused by a narcissist? They smirk, find another therapist. You don't have to stay there with that therapist. If they smirk and you feel uncomfortable with that, find another therapist. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay with that therapist. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Let's see. See if I missed anything else over here. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so, so you think the child will gravitate toward the empath parent over the narcissist one? Uh, well, you got to remember that a, a child gravitates to whoever gives them the most slack. You know, child don't like to be corrected. A child doesn't, you know, uh, so, um, and then on top of that, you got to remember there are some narcissistic parents that um, practice parental alienation. And so they become the fun parent. They become the fun parent. That narcissist will become the fun parent, spend all this money that you don't have, you know, give them money whenever they ask for money. Anytime they ask for something, they just throw money at them. So a child's going to gravitate to the fun parent, of course. You know, however, you know, in it, depending on what state you are in and who has uh, uh, like custody over the child, who the child spends the most time with when you're spending quality time with your child quality time and setting boundaries and rules, you know, a child needs, you know, a child needs boundaries. They need rules. They need discipline. Why do you think there's so many of them that join gangs? Gang gangs have rules. Gangs have a discipline, 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 you know, and disciplinary actions. And so that's why a lot of them uh, gravitate toward gangs because they're looking, they need discipline. They need uh, order. They need some type of, um, um, uh, you know, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They need someone to 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 keep boundaries, to make sure that they're being corrected, to make sure they understand right from wrong. And, and that's why I tell you guys, don't compete with that narcissist. You do what you're supposed to do. So, sorry, I meant that it's still OK to love the narcissist, but from afar uh -huh, and with boundaries versus splitting. I'm concerned that the internet is encouraging survivors to split. And when you say splitting, what do you mean? Like breaking up? You can love them from afar with boundaries versus splitting. Are you talking about versus breaking up versus like not being together anymore? So let me make sure I know what you're talking about. Um, uh, making allegations in order to stay in dad custody as he is easier friend dad and is being bought slack. How do I prove that? Okay. So I'm not sure what you're asking. Making allegations in order to stay in dad custody as he is easier friend dad and is being bought. How do I prove that in court? So I can't give you any legal advice, but one, one person that I will refer you over to is Judge Anthony Bumpiani. If you go on to Instagram, um, Judge Anthony Bumpiani. Anthony Bumpiani is a retired judge. He's, he also is a family attorney who understands narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder in the courts. Um, he has classes. Um, he has coaching. He has classes and coaching. And um, he can help you and, and help navigate you through the courts. Uh, what to say, what not to say. Um, you can't go into court calling the other parent a narcissist because you're not a professional. You're not a expert witness to be able to go in. You have to talk about the behavior. You can't talk about the fact that they have a disorder because you as a person does not know that because you're not the one that diagnosed them or gave them tests and measurements. So I highly recommend um, going to Anthony Bompiani, Judge Anthony Bompiani, retired judge on Instagram, and you can sign up for some of his classes. He even lets you do payment plans um, to assist you uh, with legal matters. Um, let's see. Now, see, that's one of the things that I was just talking about. When you say put them all on an island, you got to remember you got parents on here that have children that are narcissists. And to make a comment, put them all on the island is painful for a lot of parents. What is that going to do? You may as well say put all autistic children or autistic people on an island, you know, or put all uh, schizophrenics on an island. They have a mental disorder. They have a, a personality disorder. So because of the fact that they have a personality disorder, you know, you can't put them on an island. That doesn't make any sense. You know, unfortunately, they do wreck havoc. They do tear up hearts. That's why we do this type of stuff. Yeah, this is this is why we do this type of stuff. This is why we teach this type of stuff. Um, this is exactly what she has and has been doing. Thank you for confirming. 20 year old has gone into the military. Their grandmother, her mother tries to guilt trip her about her firm stance and she don't need to. 
change her stance. And she's doing the right thing. She don't need to change her stance. And on top of that, he's 20 years old. What she needs to do is, you know, listen, I know that's your brother. I know that's family, you know, but if he's tormenting you, you got to get away from your own brother. I can understand that. Of course, a mother doesn't want to see their, their children split and not talking and not have anything to do with themselves because, you know, that narcissist is in trouble. You know, but at the same time, you know, is that over your mental health? Is that over, um, you know, is that over your, you, you know, your your sanity, your mental health, your health? So, yeah, I would keep your, keep your hold on to hold on to that. Keep your stance. Exactly. Let's see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to go over to um, Clubhouse so if you guys would like to follow me on Clubhouse, you guys are welcome to follow me on Clubhouse. This was a new app that I wanted to try out because Haps um, is Haps is gone. So Haps is no more. And it used to um, I was used to, you know, used to be able to broadcast off of all the channels. Um, and now I can't really broadcast off of many channels. So I just want to try this app to see how this app works. Um, but I probably will go back to Restream. Restream allowed me to stream from all the other, um, you know, so we were live on Facebook and everything. So I was just trying out something new this evening. But first of all, I'd like to thank you guys all for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Those of you on Facebook, thank you for supporting me. You guys know I have a conference coming up. Um, so one of the ladies, she was not able to be there in person. Um, so she's going to be online. So I do have one um, VIP slot open. So those of you that are interested in a VIP slot in Atlanta, I'm going to be in Atlanta on July 30th. On July 30th, I'm having a conference in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, those of you that are in Clubhouse, if you click on my profile, it's got the pictures of all the speakers on there. Um, I can't put it on here. You won't be able to see it. Uh, but it's myself. It's a, my good friend, Bridget Griffin. She is a um, domestic violent advocate. She works a lot in the courtrooms. Um, she's a part of the um, the Survivors First program, but she works a lot in the courtrooms. And she and we're this the this, this year's theme is uh, training your terrorist. And so we're gonna have all these experts in here, all these professionals in here that are gonna teach you and talk to you about how you're actually training your terrorist. And the terrorist is the narcissist. How we are actually training the terrorist to be the terrorist that they are when it comes to us. And so my good friend Bridget Griffin is going to be there, who is a domestic violence advocate. She works a lot in the courtrooms. So there are things that she sees. She has to advocate. Um, she does have to talk to a lot of victims to teach them what to say and what not to say in the courtroom, how to conduct themselves, you know, what she's seen in the courtroom. And then a good friend of mine, my big brother, uh, Marcus Monroe, some of you guys that are on Mondays with my mother, uh, Helen Sadler, your destiny helper, um, Apostle Helen Sadler, some of you guys know her, um, Mr. Marcus Monroe, who um, comes and talks about uh, the law of mentality. There's a group uh, which you guys know as the alpha male group. You heard about the red pill, blue pill, all that. He used to be a part of that organization. And he got out of that organization to come to find out as we were having a conversation. A lot of those are narcissists training narcissists or narcissists training men. And the things that they're training men is really to torment you. These are these are terrorists that are being trained. Um, and one thing that he does is, number one, he tells you about these different groups. He tells you what to look for. He, he teaches you about the language. He teaches you about the different books that are out there and he's going to teach you and train you in reference to how not to get caught up with these terrorists, you know, what to look for to protect yourself. Ladies, you don't want to miss this. You know, gentlemen, if you want to come, you guys come be a part of it, but you don't want to miss this. And the information he puts is phenomenal. Last year, he only had an hour to talk. This year, I'm giving him an hour and a half because he really needs to put this information out there. He used to be a part of this organization and he got out of it. And he's going to tell you like some of the things that he saw, what they do. Um, he's not going to tell you some of the people that belong to the organization because there are a lot of people that uh, that belong to the organization that are famous, that, that you would know. But he's going to talk about it. My big sister, Kathy Gibson, my life is intentional. Uh, on my little um, previews, you, she has two books out. Um, uh, the, the um, uh, what is it? Um, uh, the qualities look for. Um, Destiny Man, the qualities to look for. Quick, easy read, powerful information. And then the, um, uh, the um, oh my gosh, what's the other book of the uh, aristocratic woman? The, the, it, it, 
Matter of fact, just click on my little video that I have. I have her books up there, um, but she's going to be there. Um, powerful, powerful. She's not just because of my sister, but because of the fact that she's a powerful woman. She gives out a lot of information on yourself, you know, on yourself, you as a woman, uh, you, you know, and, and we are women. So obviously, you know, we're talking about women, but she gives out a lot of information to help strengthen women, help you see your value, help to see that you are valuable. You are a pearl. You are a diamond. And she taught and, and things that you need to do for yourself. You know, a lot of you guys are so broken hearted. A lot of you guys are broken. And all you know is what, what kind of mess that you've been in, but you've never really taken the time about loving yourself, taking care of yourself. And this is a lot of things that she talked about. I'm telling you, when there's going to be healing at this conference, going to be healing at this conference. Just like last year, Just Be Real was there last year. She was there to assist me. Hey, Danielle. Hey, sis. Um, Danielle was there. Um, Danielle was there. And it was very powerful. Um, then, of course, you guys know my mother's going to be there. Helen Sadler, your destiny helper. Those of you know her as Apostle Helen Sadler. She's going to be there. And she's got some very powerful information. But you can't miss this. I'm telling you guys, you've got to be out there with us. It's July 30th in Atlanta, Georgia. I will be at the Marriott Marquis. Um, it is ticketed event only. If you go to overcomingnarcissistabuse.ticketleap.com and you can purchase your ticket. You can, I have one ticket left. It's not on the ticket leap. You have to email me at drcarmenbryant at outlook.com. Let me know if you're interested in that last VIP ticket. That VIP ticket, um, after the conference is over, we're going to be escorted by limousine to a restaurant of my choice. We're going to dress in semi-formal, formal wear, and we're going to enjoy each other's company. All the speakers that are going to be there uh, at my conference, you will get to sit at the table with them. And those of you that love Telsha, Edinburgh tells you with the T on MPD. She will be there. We're having a table talk um, after the conference. We're having a table talk at the end of the conference. And it's going to be myself, um, Apostle Sadler, Bridget uh, Griffin, Marcus Monroe, um, Telsha with the T on MPD, Miss Tasha uh, Lilaman. You guys seen her on um, Clubhouse as well. She's going to be there. Dr. Um, Gerald Hightower said that he will be visiting us. He's going to be there um, at the conference. So if you guys would like to meet him, he's going to be there for you guys to meet as well. Um, so you guys don't want to miss this. I'm telling you, this is phenomenal. So if you can't be there in person, you can be there online. I do have tickets. We're going to be Zoom live. So you would get to be there from the beginning all the way to the end of um, Table Talk. Um, so those of you that are registering for Zoom, you're going to be there the whole time. You get to see us come and talk to you in the camera. You'll see the conference and the people are going to see you on the screen like last year. And then in between while everybody's eating, they're going to come and talk to you on the camera. So you get to see what's going on in there. Um, but I, you guys have to be there. Listen, and if you can't be there uh, in person, go on Zoom. I do have general t uh, general admissions is still open. You guys come general admissions. I'm telling you guys, I need you guys to be there. I need you to be there. <laughs> Danielle said, if you're VIP, train yourself now how to eat and laugh at the same time. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. He's on YouTube as well. Yes. Uh, Trievet, please forgive me. Hey, Nina. Oh, man, you can join us online. You don't have to worry about being in person. You can join us online. So if you um, cannot be there in person, you can join us online. Um, those of you that want to come, uh, the email is drcarmenbryant at outlook.com. drcarmenbryant at outlook.com. So if you want a VIP ticket, let me know. Um, there's one left uh, and uh, you can come to the VIP. If not, um, you can... Uh, General admissions is still open and Zoom. For those of you that would like to join on Zoom, uh, Miss Betty, we got you taken care of. Uh, for those of you that cannot be in person, you can be on Zoom. So I will be in Atlanta, Georgia, July 30th. Be prepared, ladies, ladies, because it's getting to a point where it's going to be a ladies only conference. Right now, we're still open, but um, as of next year, it's going to be a ladies only conference, a ladies only conference uh, for the ladies to come. So right now we're still open to, to, to our, to our brothers, our Kings, uh, but starting as of ne next year, it will be a ladies only conference. Only the ladies will be there. Of course we have the men speakers, you know, uh, Marcus Monroe, uh, but 
Um, it's going to be a ladies only conference beginning next year because my niche is the women. But however, we know that men get abused just like women do. So you guys take advantage of it now while you can. Um, Cause like I said, as of next year, it's going to be a ladies only conference. Um, so you guys take advantage of it. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting ready to go. I'm trying to, trying to see what I'm doing here on the screen. I can't see anything. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm trying to see where the little comments are. Forgive me. I'm looking and I don't see, but hold on. Let me find everybody. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yes. The conference is going to be off the chain. I'm telling you guys, you're going to enjoy yourself. We have people laughing. We have people crying, uh, eating hugs. I got to hug people. So I got to meet a lot of people. I met Valerie and Valerie is just as tall as I am. So I felt good about that. Yeah. It was a whole lot of laughing. It sure was. Um, so I'm hoping to see you guys out there. Listen, you guys go and register. And then also know that my mother's going to be doing a conference in Hawaii, 11th through the 16th. Make sure you guys go look on her page. Um, go look on her page. Um, let's see. Go look on her page on uh, on Facebook and go to the events tab and all the information for the conference is there. Uh, and make sure I, I got to see you guys in Atlanta. We got to be in hot Atlanta together. OK, um, and I'm, I'm putting together some more things. So I'm trying to see when we have an opportunity um, to do a meet and greet. And of course, the next day on Sunday, um, I have family in Atlanta. We're um, trying to um, uh, get the church so that Apostle Sadler can do church services that Sunday. So if you guys are in town, you guys come and do church services on Sunday. Just let me get the um, let me get the um, church. Let me got to call my cousin to arrange that um, so that on Sunday she will have church services. Uh, and then Friday, we're trying to get it together now so we can do a meet in Greek. So I hope to see everybody there. Um, and I am so excited about meeting a lot of you guys that already have registered. So if you guys would like to come on over to Clubhouse, I'm going to talk to all the beautiful people here if they have any questions. Thank you so much for joining me. And as soon as I get off of here, I'm going to go back and I'll probably go back and do restream again. So next week we'll have all the channels open on Facebook because I know um, on Facebook it was not open for people to be. Some people follow me only on Facebook. So thank you guys so, so, so much. You're my personal therapist in my head. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see where the comment is. Hold on. Let me figure out. Scroll back up. You're my personal therapist in my head. I left a 20 year old marriage three months ago from narcissism. It's been refreshing. I love watching you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Please do know though, for um, ethical reasons, um, uh, for ethical reasons, I just want you guys to know that this information is for educational purposes only. This does not compensate or take the place of mental health therapy with a therapist, because I cannot provide therapy to many of you. Those of you that are interested in therapy, um, I do have a sponsored link, which is betterhelp.com forward slash Dr. Carmen. Um, if you go on there, you get a 10% discount. You can ask, um, you know, ask about uh, trauma, PTSD, those type of things, you know, and, and um, you will find that they will assign a therapist to you that's in your state. Uh, those of you that are interested in coaching, my slots fill up very, very fast, uh, very fast. Uh, and so um, right now, I think I may have one or two slots available. So if those of you that are interested in, in coaching, uh, email me at drcarmenbryant at outlook.com and I will provide you with my um, rates for coaching and consultation. So thank you so, so much. I appreciate each one of you. I appreciate you guys. You guys come on over to Clubhouse. I'm going to be there for just a few minutes as I'm shutting down all my cameras. Thank you guys. I love you guys. Thank you for being so patient with me and thank you for showing up as you guys always do. And I will see you guys uh, this week as I'm doing um, all my uh, TikToks. Thank you for supporting me on my TikTok videos as well. Um, sometimes those are easier to do because I'm sitting in the car right before I go into the office. So thank you guys so, so much for um, being here with me. And I will see you guys this week and then next Sunday. You guys have a wonderful evening. Good night, everybody. Man, my dressing came all the way up to my throat. So let me pull it back down. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a wonderful evening. Okay. Good night, everybody. Hey, Latoya. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful evening, okay?